Hello. Yes, I'm back from a short holidays. I hope you were able to take a few days off just to enjoy summer, just to enjoy the sun. And as I'm back to offering you these uh, reflection on some text of the lectionary, one thing came to mind when I was looking to today's gospel. I don't know if you notice, in organization, in institution, in, from community group, I would say, to government, each time some changes, each time new initiatives are suggested, there's always someone to say, this is not the right time for this. We have bigger fish to fry. Maybe we can do this later. We have heard that uh, or read about that when uh, it was a question of women's rights, uh, civil rights, LGBTQ2 plus rights. There's always someone saying, oh, this is not the right time for this kind of social experimentation. Uh, we've seen it also in the U.S., after another mass shooting, there's always a politician or a pundit saying, this is not the right time to have this debate, which led to the question, when is the right time? When is it a good time? And the same question is at the heart of the passage from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. One day Jesus is teaching in a synagogue on the Shabbat and a woman appeared. She was crippled for 18 years, the text says, and she cannot even stand up straight. That was, this is how much she was afflicted by this disease, by this condition. And Jesus led his hand on her and immediately she stood straight. And what we have here is another great healing miracle performed by Jesus. And everything seemed great until the leader of the synagogue get involved in the conversation, in the story. And he's not happy about this. He's not necessarily a bad person. He's not even against the healing of the woman. His problem reside in the timing of it. You see... Jews, those who follow the law of Moses, were not supposed to work on Shabbat. For the point of view of the leader of the synagogue, there were six days when there was opening hour in the synagogue that the lady, the women, could come and to be healed. So why this has to happen on Shabbat? From the, once again, from the point of view of the leader, she has been crippled for 18 years. One day or two will not kill her. What we have here is two different understanding of faith, two different understanding of being faithful. On one side, we have due process, order, structures, accountability, provision, something that you can predict almost. It's clear. And on the other side, you have opportunities, compassion, flexibility. And I'm not saying that one should be thrown, thrown away. Both are important. But the question is, what matters most for us? What are the main principles that should guide our action or, or words or deeds? In all this debate, in all the conversation between Jesus and the leader of synagogue, there's someone we don't hear in the text. It's the women. The women said nothing. She did not call to Jesus. No, she's just there. And most importantly, she's the one who is suffering, not the leader of the synagogue. And she's the one who showed up on an unfortunate time for the member of the institution. 
And it reminds us how easy it is for us to say, wait a little longer to people, to other people, when we're not the one who are affected by the decision. It's easy to say we're not comfortable with this yet, so you will have to wait. It's easy to set a timetable when we're not the one afflicted by the situation. But as uh, Martin Luther King wrote, the title of his, one of his famous book, we cannot wait. We can't wait. And sometimes it is those situations. Because you see, God is not bounded by human concepts of time or opening hours. No, the call we receive for, from God is to be active in this world, to be present, to spread God's message, to incarnate God's message in every place we go, wherever we go in every time, even if it's inconvenient, and I would say especially when it is inconvenient. God call us to look at the opportunity, to look at the people that we might not see, we might not consider, maybe that are forgotten by the institution, and say, well, yes, maybe it will challenge the status quo. Maybe it will bring potential disruption. Maybe it's not what the rules plan. But it's still a possibility, an opportunity for mission. It's a possibility to do what God called us to be and to do. And that's beyond the wonderful miracle and the healing of that woman. The text reminds us. It's on so many occasions. It will not be a perfect condition. All the, condi all the docks will not be in Rome. It should not block us, paralyze us, you know, be a reason to not do what we are called to do and be. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being there. I hope your ministry will continue and flourish in the next few months. I hope I'm bringing you thoughts for reflection with those reflection of mine. And until next time, take care of yourself. I remain Reverend Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man. Bye-bye.